So we're going to spend a few minutes talking about digit separation. And we're going to start off with something that you've already done in my class earlier this year. And let's say that I had a two-digit number, and I wanted to separate the tens digit and the ones digit. So let's look at that for a second. So I'm going to create a method called separate. This is the number whose digits I'm going to separate. And I'm going to separate it right in here in a second. Let's write the test code now. And let's call this method. I'm going to put the word static here just so that's a little bit easier to call. Don't worry about so much about that word. We'll talk about it later. Uh, we're going to call it separate. And then we're going to take this two-digit number, 43. And so what we, when we call it like this, what we want to do is we want to print the three. Then we want to print the four. So we want to print the ten, ones digit and print the tens digit. So see if you can work with your partner to figure out, separate the ones digit and print it. And then over here, we're going to separate the tens digit and print it. So I need two lines of code here. One to take out the three and print it, and the other one to take out the four and print it. And I want to know, how do I do that given this target variable here? I'm going to give you a hint for the next few set of exercises we're going to use. We're going to use the modulo operator, and we're also going to use the division operator. And now, what do I need to do here to take out the ones digit here? Uh, let's see. Mr. Mene, sir, how would I kick out the ones digit? If I give you the, this number and I want the ones digit, what do I do here? Like that. And now I want the tens digit. Okay, so I do the same thing except now I divide by 10 like that. So now I'm going to run this for you and show you that the, four, the 3 and the 4 and the 43 are now separated. You see that, right? Now we're going to make it a little bit harder and we're going to use a three digit number now. So I'll put in this number, and I want to get out the three, the four, and the seven. And what I'd like to do this time is I would like to use a for loop to accomplish this. So I would like to go for how to strip out each digit and shrink the number a little bit, and then strip out the next digit, shrink the number a little bit, and keep going. See if you can figure out how to do this now for a three digit number. What's the first thing I need to print? Okay, so let's do that. So let me just run this for you. Of course, it's not going to, oops, uh, I forgot to do int here. Okay, let me run this for you, first of all, and show you what's going to happen right now. And you can see it's printing out the least, we got it, we got it so it's working on the three, but then we need to make sure that the next time through the loop, it's not the same number again. So we need to get rid of the three and process the 74 next time. So we need to modify the number somehow so that it doesn't stay the same. So how are we going to modify it? Does anybody have an idea? Miss Missone. Very good. So I'm going to go target equals target divided by 10. Like that. I'm going to use a shortcut. I'm just going to go like this. OK? And now if I run it, you can see that it strips out the digits one at a time. You see that? Now here, I assume that it was a three-digit number. In practice, I'm not going to know how many digits there are going to be. And if I don't know, what kind of loop should I use? Yes, Ms. Ria? We need to replace this with a while loop, and we want to pretend that it'll work not only with a three-digit number, but that it'll work with a one-digit number, and that it'll work similarly with a five-digit number, that it'll work with any number of digits. So what I'd like you to do now is rewrite this code using a while loop, and please get that working now. Try really hard to do this by yourself instead of working with your partner. If you get absolutely stuck and you can't help it, then go ahead and ask for help. But look, I've shown you how to do it with a for loop. 
see if you can figure out how to do it with a while loop. The same method should work with all of these cases and many others, depending, shouldn't matter how many digits there are in the number, the while loop should take care of it. The thing you need to figure out about while loops is when do they stop? What is the stopping condition here? When do you know that you don't need to do the while loop anymore? What will the value of the target be when you say, okay, who can tell me what is the stopping condition? Mr. Deguj, what's the stopping condition, sir? When target is zero. Is there any other differences between the algorithm with the while loop and the for loop? I is no longer necessary. Any other differences? Yes, sir. There are no other differences. So it's as simple as going like this. That's it. All right. So now let's run it. I'll just put this in here so we can separate the answers a little bit more easily. And you can see here is the three digit one. This is the single digit one. And this is the five digit one. What would happen if I called it with a zero to begin with? And you can see it doesn't print anything at all. If this is not what's required, if you need to print a zero, you might have to add a little bit more code, but you get the idea. Okay, so digit separation. Now, let me explain to you why this problem is going to show up so often in your quizzes, tests, AP exam. And if you take any other computer science classes after this one, this algorithm is going to show up repeatedly. The reason why that the College Board and the teachers like this algorithm so much is that it tests modulo, division, while loops, method calls, everything in one tight little algorithm. That's why the College Board likes it so much. It tests so many different things in just a brief amount of code. And so this is a very common algorithm that shows up on the test in some form or other. The string two problems that I've assigned for coding bat are useful to learn for loops but not a single problem in here uses a while loop. And so I'm gonna have to supplement your while loop education in some other way, because this is not gonna give you practice on the while loops.